G'day and welcome to Club Prairie Fire, the home of tequila, Tabasco and the mighty Duckworth Lewis Stern system. You know how it works. This is season eight, episode five, entitled the Everybody Wins episode. Hooray. Mm. No winners? Well, that's what this podcast is called. Everyone gets a prize. The Aussies and the English went toe-to-toe in the T20 Ashes and the result, well, courtesy of yet another wet day in Manchester, resulting in not a single ball being bowled, the series finished one all. <laughs> Don't we love a tie, our two little cricketing nations? In 2023, the Ashes, two all. In 2019, the Ashes, two all. And, of course, in 2019, England even tied their one and only ODI World Cup win. Another tie. Hooray for no results. We love them here. Um, and uh, even better than that, well, uh, the Kiwis and the Afghanistanis, they didn't want to be outdone. Um, so they actually, they had a full test match without a bowl, a ball okay. being bowled. And the rain, get this, it actually fell before the test match was even due to start. <laughs> so, I mean, this is a new one for us. It's, um, it's a great day. Uh, well, it's a great day to be alive. It's also a great day to have a cricketing podcast when there is really no cricket to talk about. So little to chat about, hardly any cricket played. So let's bring in our two living legends who can fill a rain break better than anybody, oh. Englishman Michael Vaughan and uh, Australian Adam Gilchrist, who would like to go first, gents? Well, I'll go. I mean, I'll, I'll wake myself up um, morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are. Um I like the fact you've called it the uh, the T20 Ashes Pro. <laughs> mm. I like that. Is that is that new to the game? Does, does the rest of the world know that the uh, the T20 series? I, I, uh, I, I have not it. come up with that, Vaughnia. I think that is doing the rounds, and I, and I assume that this series we're about to see is about to be the ODI Ashes. Oh, so there's so, another Ashes to take part. So no doubt that'll be a tie as well, will it? Yep, that'll be either one all or two all or nil all or who was the defending champion of the T Twenty Ashes? Well, mm. so the last time Australia and England played, correct me if I'm wrong, was in the T Twenty World Cup in the Caribbean, in which we got the chocolates. Would that be right? The that's, not a seri- that's not a series. Okay, well then the series before that, which was. <laughs> I'm pretty sure England won 2 0. Is that what you're getting there? I actually don't know. No, it was a Yeah, I think the series before that, (laughs) which was before that World Cup, wasn't it? Just before we played a series of three and or two or whatever it was. Have a look. I think England may have won that. Well, I just checked because on on these kind of new grounds that we're going, I think we we hold the T20 Ashes, the 50 over Ashes. (laughs) So that means we're 2 1 up in the Ashes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's Just nice. check it all. Yeah, okay. Oh, I'm going through. Um, obviously, you're 3-0 up in the moral ashes. We wow. can never compete with that. Mm. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to get to. The, congratulate mm. you, Vaughn, on the, the moral victory. <laughs> uh, it doesn't really need to be said anymore, does it? Because I noticed that the English aren't saying it anymore. They're talking about, like we touched on last week, being top of the pops um, mm-hmm. and being the number one position on the charts, but that hasn't happened. So we'll just stick to moral ashes and let, let you rejoice in that. Hey, on that um, Afghanistan, New Zealand, that that was your perfect tour match situation, wasn't it? God, yeah. how often you prayed for that situation when in those games in between tests where you didn't really want to be playing them. There wasn't much to be gained. And you just opened the curtains every morning, just hoping, just hoping to see a bit of... Dave Hosington pouring down, but um, that's that's true. Tremendous, tremendous cricket, that. But it, for, is, is well, that, that it, it, didn't, it didn't rain during the game and they still didn't bowl a ball? Yeah, that's correct. I think right? there was a bit of light drizzle. Yeah. And then, I mean, the imagery coming out of it, they dug up the whole outfield, used the spades, and, and they plugged in just a small bedroom fan. And two guys were just walking around the whole, some of the funniest pictures I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, they got a bit of stick, did Noida. And we got a bit of stick, or me particularly, for not knowing Noida was in India. Great yeah. to know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, we did. I, see, I think in that situation that no matter what, they should just play and just see what happens. Just maybe mm. they decide day four, just have a whack. And just no matter how bad the pitch conditions are, I mean, they wouldn't just have been unsafe, with it. right? Yeah. Mm. The, yeah, the ball would have just test, been played. Test cricket, remember, though. Test cricket, you, you're not allowed to play. Yeah. Right. So, if right it was a T20 game, that it worked a way of trying to get a game on, but because it's test cricket, nah. 
<laughs> no, oh. it's, it's, it's a protected species. You just don't like to do anything with it. <laughs> it's going to be an extinct species soon. <laughs> exactly, with exactly, it. exactly. I'm going to plug that, my computer in. I'm not running off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that, that, that's why it will be extinct soon if we don't just get on and play somehow. But you're right, though, Prem. I mean, it, if the outfield was like a bog or... You know, like you know, if you're running, your legs are going under the under the turf because it's that soft. It makes a hell of a test match, wouldn't it, viewing? Imagine they all have to wear gumboots or flippers, <laughs> and the entire test match. Well, like I don't know why it has to be so. I don't know. Stuck up. What was the result? Ol? Was I right that the English had won the last series? They've won the last two. Yeah, they Ooh. won 2022 T20 series in Oz. Yeah. No result, Canberra. England by eight runs in Canberra and Perth. And then right. 2020, they won all three, uh, sorry, two of three right? in Southampton. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. The Ashes. Lucky pro. Yeah. It's <laughs> a shame. Well, it's like every time you turn the TV on and there's a T20 international on in England, it's at Southampton. Yeah. What, what, what's the go there? Yeah. <laughs> is, that the, is that the mecca for T20 internationals or something? Well, I think yeah, that's me- where. Where you blokes, abs- that's where you started the rot for us in 2005, wasn't it? A T20 international down there. Very yeah, good. 100-run yeah. win. Yeah. yeah. That, that's where we take all teams to have Southampton, <laughs> T20. Was that, <laughs> was that prior to that? It's, it's like taking you to Galatasaray in the Champions League away. <laughs> <laughs> Middle of Turkey. Was, yeah. So was that prior to that five, to the Ashes? Yeah. Yeah, that was, no. that was early doors. Yep. The no. second ever T20 International. Oh, Michael Vaughan. I, think I, might, have, I got, think I might have not contributed. It's a golden duck for Vaughan, yeah, the, um, captain, but came in at five. But England posted 179 for eight. Australia all out for 79. Uh, top score, Jason wow. Gillespie, 24. Second top score, Gilly, 15. But Darren Goff got you. What about the Globes in here, though? Andrew Simons, duck. Michael Clark, golden. Duck. Ricky, Ricky Ponting, Ponting duck. duck. Goodness me. That, you know, um, just a forfeit for John Lewis. <laughs> yeah, a little bobbler. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to work out whether that was before. So I, I reckon that was after the one-day series, maybe, that we had a triangular with Bangladesh, the all-faded one in Cardiff where Roy forgot to sleep <laughs> all the game and <laughs> forgot to stop drinking before the game too. But, um, but we, yeah. That, 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 that can happen. That lit, oh, Jesus, absolutely. Anyone that's played the game knows a night can get away on you. Um, <laughs> that, yeah, that, that lit the fuse for the, the spice of 2005 and the rest of it and the, and the battle. I remember you guys getting 100 and, what was it, 79 or 178. Mm. Did Trez get some early, Marcus Trescott? Yeah, did? He, oh. he did. He got 41 yeah. of 37. Oh. KP, 34 of 18. It felt like it was 280. Like, that was so new to us. We'd played the one international against New Zealand maybe earlier that year, and I reckon Punner got 90-odd, where everyone was dressed up. This is how serious we were taking it. We were dressed up like we were in the early 80s. The, the, the Marshall brothers had afros bigger than yeah, flat yeah. out of the movie. Um, but it just seemed like such an attack on everything we'd ever thought about cricket and – Certainly, you know, a pretty dominant white ball sort of team, Australia, for a long time. Well, we got crushed. Like, but, that was astounding. Yeah. It was a real, a real shock. It was, looking at it, was a really tough week. You lost then, I think, which was the Tuesday. Then on the Thursday, you lost to Somerset. They chased 342 yeah. down in their 50 overs. Yeah, then, yeah. You lost, then you lost to Bangladesh on the Saturday and lost to England on the Monday. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good seven days. Well, you got to you got to warm up. You got to ease into these tours. You probably yeah had a thousand pints along the way and had a good time. <laughs> I know, it's funny though. Whenever people refer to the 05 Ashes, you know, and Vaughan's masterclass, they don't talk about this lead up, do they? They no. never talk about the. To be fair, we've stumbled across something here. The Somerset yeah. openers. They chased it down because they were 197 for one. Both openers got tons. Graham Smith, captain. Sanajai Sarir. <laughs> Both got tons okay. in the chase. Oh, that's not a bad opening pair for Somerset. <laughs> yeah. Did James Hildreth, a young James Hildreth, get some runs? Late on, he, he finished the chase, yeah. Third, yeah. Right. Should have had more England caps, James Hildreth. <laughs> Any. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I reckon good. there was a – we ended up winning the tri- triangular series against Bangladesh. 
I reckon. But then we played a three-game ODI series against you blokes. I reckon that might have finished one all. I think you're <laughs> yeah. right, Lords. Lords was rained off. Lords, yeah. No, no, Lords, oh, Lords was a tie. A tie. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Wow, 196 mm. for nine, 196 all out. One yeah. of the great ties. Um, how do you go? Another duck for Vaughny. This is tough reading. <laughs> <laughs> Gilly, he was focused on the he was focused on the ashes. Gilly, 20, 27. <laughs> there you go. Did I that ball in that game? Um, no. No. <laughs> did Did you take a catch? No. 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 In fact, I reckon. I reckon in the. Um, I reckon in the oval match, I got a hundred, and I thought this is yeah typical. This is just going to be a typical like, tour of England. We're going to smash them. I'm going to get lots of runs, all this stuff. Between that hundred and my next one was about two and a half years. I think. <laughs> 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 Little did I know what was coming in the Ashes tour, and that the game was going to get me by the scruff of the neck and shake me for two years. But uh, hey, Jim, anyway. Just, uh- just on this, though, I mean, I, I, I bumped into a few of the Aussies the other day. They're, they're having a tremendous golf trip. Oh. oh. Uh, they really are getting stuck in. In Scotland, they played all the great courses up there. Um, I believe they played a nice course um, just before. North I think Canada. it might have been down in Southampton. I think they played a nice course yeah. down there. Yeah. Came up to Man- I, don't, I don't know where they played them around Manchester, but I, I, I think they might have been around... There's a course called JCB. I believe the England side were there yesterday uh, leading into Nottingham. I think uh, the Aussies are around. I think there's a place called Hollingwell that I think the Australians have gone to play. So it's good to see that they're, they're kind of copying what England do now with the golf as well. Yep. Could that not be the deciding? Mm. Couldn't they do a round of 18? I mean, it doesn't matter Excellent. how long your golf course yeah. gets. Excellent suggestion. Excellent. Mm. Good well, actually, um, yeah, Hollingwell, I've played there with... Uh, former England cricketer, who's a good mate of my brother, James Taylor's. Uh, he plays their titch, and he's a very good two handicapper. And he just plays golf mm-hmm. all the time. And a member at Hollingwell, it is a serious yes. track. Good golf, I mean, good golf for titch. Yeah, well, you know what we could also do? Just scrap the T twenties, and they just play three rounds of golf, and we uh, just don't I'm have any cricket. Well, I, well, I want to get rid of bilateral series. Honestly, they are the, yeah, they are the, <laughs> the, the biggest waste of space now. Really? Yeah. What do you mean? We've we've just we've just recounted seamlessly the last five or six times these teams have matched up, <laughs> thanks to AI and Google. <laughs> yeah, GBT. Um, yeah, I, I, I generally just think that the the bilateral one, one day series now they're just uh, they are, pardon the pun, damp squids. They're just <laughs> hey, I, they're just, they're just on. on. There's no yeah. narrative. They are just on. Yeah, they're, they're uh, stocking fillers, aren't they? They're sort yeah. of getting around the ICC events. Um, so let's maybe not give it too much more attention other than I just wanted to bring up Jake Fraser McGurk versus Jacob Bethel. Who's got the bigger future? Oh, good question. Ooh, that's a good shout. Saw so a I little mean, taste of both of them, didn't yeah, we, in that, I mean, in that series? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, ooh, this Jacob Bethel's good. Very, very good. He bowls handy left arm spin, brilliant fielder. Yeah, uh, Jake Fraser Berserk, as they say. Um, oh, he's he's a gun, isn't he? He can he can launch it. I, I will say about Jake, I, I think he's got to understand the gears a little bit more. Yeah, and I think over time he'll understand that you, you can't just play in fifteenth uh, gear <laughs> in 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 and around the quality uh, bowlers that he'll face. Um, but he's certainly got a huge talent. Yeah. So who who are I, we I voting? I think Barbie, I think both of them are going to be around. Ah. Oh, kind of chats, particularly in white ball cricket, for a long, long time. I think Ricky Ponting this week came out, didn't he, to speak about Jake Fraser McGurk and saying he will be uh, could be a threat in all three formats. If he, Careful um... how you clip that statement up about Ricky there. Make sure that you let it flow and don't cut it off at the end of the first <laughs> line. But um, I, I think <laughs> I think actually it's probably silly of us to speculate who's going to have the bigger career because they're both exciting talents and that was probably the highlight of that uh, – that moral mm. victory to England in the drawn series that, that those we got to see that little taste of the of the talent that is uh, before us. So that's absolutely. exciting. Absolutely. No, and I hate to be a stickler for the rundown. Yes, yeah. I, I hate to, but I, I still have to introduce Ollie. So oh, okay. um, <laughs> oh, hey, Prof. I, what are we? Season eight, episode forty-two. Yeah. 
Actually, no, don't. I was going to say you should send a rundown out one day to us just so that we yeah. should have a one, but no, don't. No, because the quiz. Well, <laughs> yeah. I can if you'd like. No. I know I know, Vaughny's not up for it, but I can <laughs> to you, Gilly, if you'd like. <laughs> That's the word rundown in this show sounds a bit odd. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's yeah. fun to stick to. No. Hey, Ollie, how are you? <laughs> yeah, sorry, uh, uh, Ollie Silverton, everybody. Hey. Our, our, our producer, Ollie. Mm. I believe a big announcement. Big today. announcement. And oh. this is nice to get us off ODI cricket into test match cricket. That's so. how engaged. <laughs> you can't, it's you can't get engaged to a, an online bot. You actually can. Corny. Oh, can oh, you? Yeah, you can get engaged to <laughs> someone recently. <laughs> married, <laughs> someone married a car. Uh, yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's more exciting than that. Um, and um, hopefully worth more money um, than the ring would be because it's a sponsorship, everyone. Oh. It's the one and only Cricket Australia Travel Office. They have come on for this next... Well, we've got three episodes in this patch. Then we're doing 12 over when Vaughn is over in Oz for the whole summer um, mm. for the Border Gavaskar Trophy. So uh, one of the biggest rivalries in sport, bit bit bigger than the bilaterals. Um, and they are the best people to go for, for your priority seats, your hotels, everything. Um, take all the stress. And they do all your travel packages from all over the world. And what we're going to do with them each week you two are going to alternate tour stories to go with different tours that are going mm-hmm. on. And because they've just released these package for the Border Gavaskar Trophy, Gilly, they wanted to hear from you first of a classic moment when India were touring Oz. Any time in your career can be about the opponents, about something in your team, but um, something there that's linked to uh, the, you know, Cato as they're known, Cricket Australia Travel Office. Oh, mm-hmm. wow. Wow. This is, what a- this is getting serious. This mm. is. This is mm. outstanding. This is yeah. everything we've hoped for and yeah. dreamt of. It is a sponsor. Yeah. But it uh, well, <laughs> even better that it's a, an organisation in and around the game we love. Uh, and they do what we have all been fortunate to do, and that's tour around the place and provide uh, travel packages, exactly what we were targeting. So yeah. perfect, perfect fit. Um, India and Australia, the rivalry. So. Do we need to have it specific about India here or us over there or No, whatever? no, no. They, they, I think this week they were looking at potentially India in Australia because right, that, okay. uh, that's cool. what's coming up. I think next week Vaughn might be touching on Oz in England because that is also going on at the moment. Um, no, that's, but, uh, that's where India have won the last two times in Australia, just to let you know. Oh, sorry, Vaughn, it's actually <laughs> Gilly's story that we're trying to no, – uh, no. you're next week, mate. We're <laughs> <laughs> Gee, India in Australia. Oh, I'm going to have to change my story. Well, the, a funny thing happened uh, when India were in Australia the last time I played against them. Um, yeah. I was trying to attempt to take a catch off the bowling of Brett Lee and uh, having the night before I'd been on the phone to my wife all night working out the travel plans, um, which I'm sure Cree Australia Travel Office would have put together for mm-hmm. us, uh, because we were touring the West Indies uh, after that series. Um, on that tour, I was probably going to get myself up to about 99 tests. Uh, then after that, we were going to tour India, um, and that's where I would have played, you know, looking at the diary and the schedule, I was going to play my 100th and join an elite group uh, of Australian test cricketers and a few others around the world. Uh, then the next day, I attempted to take a catch off the outside edge of VVS Laxman dropped it, an absolute soda, as simple as it gets. The ball hit the ground. I looked at the replay on the big screen, looked at the replay again and again and again, and it went probably 32 times, at which point I thought the crowd had seen it and they didn't need to replay it again. But I turned to Matthew Hayden and I said, I'm done. I'm out. From the ball hitting my gloves to then the ball hitting the grass, in an instant I realised I was. it was time to retire. Don't worry about the tour of the West Indies. Don't worry about the... 100th test in India, that was a decision made for me to give up test cricket. A lot of realisation came to me. And I said that to Hados, mate, I'm done, I'm out. And he looked at me and just very quickly said, come on, mate, don't beat yourself up. It's not the first one of those you drop, and it probably won't be the last, let's face it. But uh, a good support from a teammate. But no, that, that's a moment in an Indian series in Australia that I remember. That's um, a big and one. It was a defining moment, actually the definitive moment of my test career. But it was a... Uh, Never regretted it since. Yeah, I, I, I'll be honest. I was hoping uh, Haydos's response was going to be a uh, good decision. <laughs> <laughs> About time. <laughs> well, it, it's probably exactly what him and a few others, particularly Brett Lee, who bowled it, were thinking. 
<laughs> Does VVS Laxman know that he ended your career? Have you ever had that chat with him? I don't know that I have. I don't know. I'll have to try and get a hold of him and, and let him know. Oh, I don't think he would. No. That'd be good to do on the pod. Um, thanks for coming on. You ended my career. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah. that is uh, an amazing one to start from uh, for the uh, that segment. Yes, so very good. Thank you. Uh, and remember to get your tickets. It's uh, cricket.com. Dot au forward slash travel or you can call one three hundred one three three two three two. Look forward to Vaughn's story next week already. Yeah. Very very good. <laughs> uh, now obviously that is big news. Big sponsor. Oh, uh, yeah. Rebrand. Look at us. We're absolutely flying. And Vaughn, I wanted to thank you for dressing appropriately. Yeah. I know that you know that this is now a very serious podcast, mm. and you do look very dapper. For mm. is there? I'm assuming there's something else going on today. Is there something more exciting? No. Nope. Just thought I'd smarten the uh, podcast up. You three look uh, a little bit scrubby, so I just thought I'd uh, jazz it up a little bit. You just mentioned in the board of Gavister, uh, Gavin Scar Trophy. I, I have noticed this week that my social media has been popping a little bit with Sonny Gavaskar's Gav- Gav- name. Sonny um, um I, I think he's got the wrong end of the stick of one of my comments. Oh, no. <laughs> You haven't turned him against you, have you? <laughs> What's happened? Well, I kind of alluded that Joe Root getting to beyond Sachin's record would be a great thing for the game. Yeah. Because I, I, I don't think India will ever want, you know, not yeah. one of their own to be at the top of the tree. Yeah, remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll, that keep, they... that'll keep Test Cricket alive because India will want yeah, to see Joe. A, bit a, a little bit of tongue in cheek, but also there's a bit of semi serious in that that I do think it would uh, help the game. Um, and I think Sonny's taking it the wrong way. So I just keep getting these pop-ups from Indian online kind of news, li- news outlets where mm-hmm. Sonny's attacked Vaughan. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Were you, yeah. Did you get on all right with him before that, Vaughan? Is this Great. a new feud? Great, oh. yeah. yeah. I work with his son, Rohan. He's a big, uh, he works with us at the, he's a crick buzzer. He's a buzzer. Rohan. He's a, yeah. Hey, he's a tequila yeah. man too. Oh, tequila man. man, big man, United fan, loves it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sounds like another guest we need. So that's Vivius Laxman. That's mm. Sunny. Do we Sunny? Let's account. get Sunny on. How can we do that, Gil? Oh, we'll give it a go. We'll, yeah, we'll let's ask. get Sunny on. Well, it worked like well Sunny. with you and Muhammad Hafiz. That was one of our best episodes, and you had a Where wonderful. Where is Muhammad Hafiz these days? Has he, has he got a job yet? Uh, did he call him? <laughs> I thought it's all been smooth sailing for the Pakistan team since they took him out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Apparently, uh, when they play England uh, in October, word on the street is that uh, Pakistan want to take England on uh, on a green top. So England right. are going to go to Pakistan. I don't know where the venues are. They keep swapping and changing it. But the whisper is that Pakistan believe that uh, the way to beat England is uh, on a green top. Well, interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Different uh, tactics as he's taken over there. Just try and get the ball zipping around. Because they got no spinners, they said, didn't they, after their Bangladesh defeat? So mm, go, I, I think I'd be thinking more, <laughs> yeah, more, that, more, more <laughs> a bit, of, more a bit of tweak. <laughs> well, out of the box thinking, you never know. Um, mm. That's how Basball was built, born. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was thinking. Um, mm. Disball. Well, let's talk a bit of um, <laughs> Disball. Uh, Dizball, did he? Dizball was Jaswal, wasn't it? Jaswal was Dizball. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's right. Um, obviously, that man, Brendan McCullum, he uh, white ball coach now. Um, we chatted about this last week. Um, I heard you on Test Match, Test Match Special, Vaughny. It's my favourite show, other than this one. And you were saying the two things, the uh, – ODI cricketers need to work on number one fielding. Mm. I don't think their fielding's up to scratch. And number two, the running between wickets. Mm. Now, um, surely with Baz, there won't be any running between wickets. <laughs> surely it's just walking down to give the guy a glove after you've hit a four or a six, or um, some gardening, just fake so, gardening. That's right. Mm. So do you think? So that's obviously a bit of a lull since 2019. Do you think if they just tweak those two little things that that could be something to propel them back to the I, I, I was trying – we did a, a podcast on uh, Test Match Special about the white ball team and how it could get better. And I, I don't think England are a an amazing fielding team. 
So I think there's an area of uh, improvement that if they become an outstanding fielded team, it might be 15 runs a game. I don't think there is any data in terms of how many runs a great fielding team saves or protects. Um, so I think they, I think they can get better at fielding. And also running between the weeks, I reckon you can nick another seven to ten by running between the wickets that a little bit more dynamically. So um, the strike, because every, every team's got players that can whack it. Every team's got all the different skill sets now. Most teams have a left armour. All the seamers can bowl all the different variations. Generally, they have a, uh, a spinner that can spin it either way. You know, there's no surprise in terms of skill sets anymore. So I think you've got to look after... I'm sounding quite boring here, but I, I think you have to look after things that you can control. And fielding is one. I look at all the great one-day sides. They they generally feel like a little pack, like a well-oiled unit. Uh, I'm not too sure England are that unit at the minute, but they've got a young enough team and a a, a very fit team that uh, should be able to come at an outstanding fielding team. That 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 those numbers and metrics: fifteen in the field, fifteen runs saved in the field, and seven running between wickets. Uh, is that based on your personal? Skill and agility in the field, and your and your and your agility between the wickets, and your ability to get in and out and turn. Yeah, that, 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 there's no there's no there's no finer um, ex cricketer that can talk about this subject more than me. <laughs> hmm. I was going to say because how many runs um, do you count for for drop catches when that batsman goes on to get more? Because um, that obviously you know is a big factor yeah. as well with building. Yeah, well that was that was our tactic to just make sure that the games were close. <laughs> put, put me under put me under some high balls i drop it and then obviously gotta remember the england team are the entertaining team ollie it's all about entertainment yep. and making sure that we give the opposition a chance so uh, i would be under quite a few of those high balls drop them and then guess what the game becomes a little bit closer well i thought it was funny on because the other person commenting on the english team's fielding was phil tufnell <laughs> on that yeah <laughs> podcast <laughs> well, are these two taking the piss here have they got a couple of glasses of red here um <laughs> I guess, though, Gilly, and we were commenting, if you go back to that World Cup victory for Australia, that that was the difference. That it was the I mean, the, everybody batted well, but it was the fielding for the Australian side that, that, you know, ultimately beat India in that final. Yeah, it set the tone, didn't it, for the day. Travis Head's catch, yeah. running back. I mean, it probably started, uh, to, to your point, Vaughan, it, it, it started in the semi-final against South Africa up in Calcutta. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Marnus in the gully and Smith and so on. So, yeah, the, the, all the top teams that have sustained success, more so in white ball, it becomes evident. But in test cricket, it doesn't hurt. But they've all been dynamic in the field and had a few guys, probably two or three on each side of the wicket, that control the game and, and set the tone. So, yeah, it was probably significant in India, uh, Prof. Well, a couple mm. of the Aussies, uh, their best fielders, return to that ODI squad. So Steve Smith and uh, Marnus Lubble-Skugney, have I said that correctly? Mm-hmm. Um, they go back into that squad. Um, no Pat Cummins, mm-hmm. really. Uh, ben Dwarshus, he's come in. Uh, Cooper Connolly, he's remained in the UK. Yeah. Um, and then the big one that I wanted to ask you about is this Marley Beardman. Yep. West, West Australian. Yeah, just played in the under nineteens World Cup, got the victory against South Africa. Can you yep. tell us a bit about this young man? Not really. Perfect. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seen a lot of him. He's played one domestic one day game for uh, for WA. Uh, what he is 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 fast. He's already fast. He's just turned nineteen. He says he's going to get stronger and do the weight appropriate weights program. DK Lilly, none other than the great Dennis Keith who I did happen to um, have a rather long lunch with on Friday. Uh, so he's in good touch. Um, he's, <laughs> he's worked with him and working with him, so he'll develop any, him. Any, nice. any chance, Gil? Just saying, any chance? DK? I mean, he is, he is cricket in mm. royalty. Oh, on the pod? Mm. Just, just ask no him. No chance. Already <laughs> asked him. Already <laughs> asked him. No, Mate, no. I had him. I had him, and then by the end of lunch, he said no. So. <laughs> you needed to move it into dinner. I mean, you needed to... <laughs> yeah, no, don't worry. Uh, others did kick on to dinner and breakfast, but uh, <laughs> it's yeah, it's a flat no from Dennis. Doesn't do that sort of stuff. He's decided that he's not up on um, up with it enough to be able to 
be an authoritative figure, but I told him it's very lighthearted. But anyway, maybe we'll keep chipping away at that. Uh, but he, yeah, Marley Beardman um, looks like he's going to be quick and get quicker and quicker. But I think it's a speculative little mm. experience sort of tour. He may well slot in and play a game, who knows, but there's about half a dozen that are either resting or injured. Um, Lance Morris has been left to stay you know, here in Perth and just get himself right for the more for the summer. So good on uh, Marley. Exciting times. Uh, one to watch. Oli, Oli, just check about the England are the, are the team that picked players from nowhere. So Australia copying England, is that right? Yep. <laughs> No, that once again is taken. Um, yeah, so that's <laughs> it's fine, but it's not original. But well done there. And let's look, look at the England squad because there's no mm. um, no just Butler. So Harry Brook Vaughney comes in as mm. captain. Then we see Joffa return. Brook mm. Ball, um, mm. Liam Livingston's on form. Ben Duckett, friend of the pod, rumored to be the opener again. I think it's only eight times he's opened in the last eight mm. years or something like that. ODIs. Um, mm. He's but Matt Potts on the back of a nine for one innings. But our, our, our lesser known person, John Turner. Can you tell us a bit about him, Vaughny? This ball's done. quick. Quick? Mm. Like real quick? Yeah, he balls sharp. Does uh, John Turner, yeah, plays at Hampshire. Yeah, quick bowler. Another John, one. John Another Turner. One. Mm. And, of mm. course, Jamie Smith, who this week has oh. been compared to a very own Adam Gilchrist. Oh, yes, I saw mm. that. Yes. Old, uh, Paul Collingwood coming out on Jamie Smith. Mm. You go back to the days when Gilchrist used to come in at number seven for Australia. It sucks mm. the life out of you as the opposition when someone has the ability to do something like that. He's shown in his short test career some great skills, and he's certainly an entertainer. You could see everybody in the crowd just wanting and willing that partnership to carry on. There you go. Can I just say mm. it's actually our thing to compare new cricketers to Gilly. So if England <laughs> can stop all. doing that. <laughs> if, if, we're just saying, if, if that's right from Colin, we will maybe England are copying Australia, perhaps. Mm. But, yeah. uh, but uh, I, don't think so. I don't think so. No, because you copied we, Jack Russell. <laughs> we, roll the dice. we roll the dice on Marley Beardman. Where's, why is Archie Vaughan not in the England team? Ah, Mate. Segue. He's... Uh, He's uh, <laughs> he had a bit of a week out last week. <laughs> oh, no, he's, uh, he's, 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 well, he'll have a challenge the next couple of weeks. He's playing a, a couple of decent sides, but maybe at the top of the tree, Duke Ball, end of September. It's a bit foggy here in Manchester. <laughs> it's like, good luck, good luck, son. <laughs> go, Is he going to go? Ball go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And try and try try and tweak a few when there's a little bit of frost on the end of your fingers. <laughs> Bonnie, if, if you went to Archie now and tried to give him some pointers on spin bowling, would would he listen to you or no? No, he'd say go yeah. away, Dad. He yeah, I think he's, he's, he's being well looked after away from uh, my advice on how to tweak a, a, a little red ball. So yeah, I, I mean, think he's I think he's in good hands where he is. I mean, he's last got... week. Oh, sorry, for you go, Gilly. Oh no, I was just going to say he's got your uh, little celebration down, Pat. Too that run off across the pitch with the <laughs> the arm. <laughs> it's, there's even yeah. a bit of Alan Shearer about it, but uh, it's a good celebration. Mm, yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's hope he celebrates it a few more times. Yeah, yep. absolutely. I mean, we had that social predict, sort of looking at the Ashes 11s and the spin mm. was between Leach and Bashir, but. It was actually Leach and Archie who combined for all 20 wickets in that absolutely <laughs> what, incredible we... county championship game. Did anybody see the pitch? What did this thing... <laughs> it what was, does it look like? It was... It was, it was... <laughs> Just a little bit of tweak. It's in the call... Um, the Marshalls call... came back down and took it. <laughs> they, they, they called Taunton Hyderabad. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, right. there's a bit of tweak down there. Um, there's been some other news, isn't there, in the county side of things? We touched on golf earlier because that win was against Surrey. They, so they at top. They had a they have a big game this week, Vaughan, which has been trending. And I'm sure you've got oh, an opinion yes, on this. this. Good, yeah. They have somehow allowed Ollie Pope to not play this week in their crucial game because he's at the BMW Golf in the pro am uh, alongside mm. KP and others, and he's just missing the game. <laughs> has that yeah. uh, been getting some attention in the UK? Well, I it, it, but I get it. I mean, he goes to Pakistan, and I, I don't know when they go to Pakistan. They must go to Pakistan in a Weeks. Weeks. I mean, yeah. So, you know, it's 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 always the um, you know the the kind of debate over here. As soon as an England player's not playing for England, he's got to go back to the camp. But it's a different world now. You know, they are England players. 
And uh, at the start of the season, they might play a few just to get their eye in. And then pretty much once that's happened and they start to play for England, it's uh, it's pretty much on the England train. And, you know, this is his time of rest. So why not peg up at Wentworth? I think he's playing with right. Jamie George, the rugby yeah. player. I think uh, he's playing with Jamie. I don't know. What, who's the pro? Well, he's the England captain for rugby, England captain for cricket. Yeah, but who's who's the pro for who, who've they got? Who, who've they drawn? I know I know um, Stokes is playing with Luke Donald. Stuart Broad's pegging up with Rory. Yep, that's right. I'll have a quick look here. Yeah. Brown um, pro groups there. Now I'm uh, I'm conscious of the time here, Vaughny. I know that you've got some. Yeah, I've got to go to London, guys. Come on. Yeah. So I just want a <laughs> a quick prediction. Uh, let's just do the first, first three. The golf? You want to do the first well, three? We'll no, back. not the golf, Vaughny. We'll be back. We'll be back after, after the first three. So uh, first. T- sorry, first ODI is tomorrow at Trent Bridge. Um, who's going to win it? Is this? A, I mean, this is probably pretty I think pointless. It's the day after, I think it's Thursday. Oh, yeah, but we're, yeah, we're pretending. That. I see what you've done there, pro. Yeah, yeah. That's clever. <laughs> That's clever. Well, nearly, uh, we nearly got away with it, Vaughny. Um <laughs> Right. I, yes, I want a prediction for uh, the first three ODIs. Where's the second and the third one, Ollie? I haven't. Headingly. Looked that up. There's five of them. Yes, but we're yeah. back on after three. Oh, on. Trent Bridge, uh, Headley Durham. <laughs> Trent Bridge, Headley Durham. It'll be by the end of this, uh, England will be two one up. Gilly, oh, I think Australia will be three nil up. Um, pending rain, there'll be rain or snow somewhere. So, but just very quickly, we are mindful of time, but I think we shouldn't gloss over the fact that. One of the greatest comebacks in history. And I don't know if this game will start before our next step, but uh, Rishabh Pant, there mm. can't be many more formidable, tough, psychological and physical comebacks in the game after his uh, out. Friend of the show, as we all know. Um, and at some point, Ollie will drop in a little snippet in the edit of Rishabh being on here. <laughs> but, <laughs> Uh, how good's that? Six hundred and twenty odd days since his uh, since his traumatic crash, and he's back mm. in an Indian team that has won seventeen Test series in a row at home. Yeah, play Bangladesh, don't they? Yeah, you see any threat to that seventeen in a row? No, no, no. I think it'll be uh, how many? Uh, two match series. Ah, uh, yeah, I would have thought so. <laughs> Se- yeah. That one seven. Did you say seventeen series in a row in at home? Mm. And who beat them in that series before that? I think it was England. Yeah, yeah. Were, it you, was. were you there, Vaughny? Uh, I wasn't there, but it, that's correct. Yeah, right. Who was the captain at that stage? Uh, Alistair Cook. Cook. Mm. Ah. Yep. There you go. Nice work, Rish- Rishab. Um, and good luck. I love these series where it's an even number of matches. It's one of my favourite things. Because yeah. um, <laughs> we love ties. We do love ties. We love draws. Yeah. Um, fantastic. Mm. We want more of them. Uh, now, would you like to do the quiz now, You've got Ol? five minutes to each quarter to finish Ooh, with the yeah. quiz. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Um, just a quick update, obviously, on, the, on that Celebrity Pro-Am. Um, Jamie George, Ben Earl and Ollie Pope are the only group without a pro. <laughs> <laughs> just announced on social media. But you are no right. pro. Stuart Broad, Gareth Bale are with McElroy, but there isn't a third am. So, Vaughny, if you're available mm. tomorrow, keep your phone nearby, mm. I would say. Um, mm. And then there was Jimmy Anderson, Andy Murray, and Anton Dubeck uh, with Robert McIntyre. So, yeah, Jimmy in there. Do you well. normally play in that one, Vaughny? Uh, yeah, I've played it in the past. Yeah. There you go. No, no, phone, no phone call this time. <sighs> I'll no we'll sort it out. Wow, well, yeah. you, maybe you, you won it too many times, maybe. Mm. I'm rather disappointed, but, you know, we get over it. We get, we're good. <laughs> we get over um, it. Okay, so um, in an homage to our new sponsor, yes. um, Touring, and Aussies are in the UK, it is a quiz about Australia in England. I've only done the test ashes. I haven't done the T20 and ODI ashes oh. for these questions, oh. um, but that is it. So it's for one question from each of the last five series. Um, and for each, it'll be a player's name you'll give me and then a number, um, what it will represent. So question one, who had the highest batting average in the 2023 Ashes? So it's always in the UK series. Who was it and what was their average? Closest wins. Oh, 
2023. Mm, it's the last time. Oh, no, two all, wasn't it? Two all. Usman Kawaja. Oh, 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 yeah. yeah. And what and number? Ha, what number are you going? Fifty-eight. Fifty-four. Probably wouldn't. Fifty-three point three three. Zach Crawley. Oh. Is the correct. So does someone win that no one, one or what? No. But just oh, no. We, we need the person oh, for the point. So draw, draw, draw tie. Uh, tie. Four years tie. in. In 2019 Ashes series, the leading wicket taker claimed the most victims in an Ashes series in England for the last 23 years. Who was it? And then, and how many? So oh. it was 23 years that record. Stuart Broad. How many? 28. Gilly? Oh, Pat Cummins. How 27. Many? It's a point for Gilly. Pat Gummins, 29. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, before that was um, yeah. Warren and McGraw, I think 31 and 32 in 2001 or something. Um, yeah. So there you go. Number 1-0 one nil, one nil Gilly. Question number three, the 2015 Ashes. Who hit the most boundaries? <laughs> what, player or team? Play, player. Oh, 2015? If you, say, if you say the same player, then we will obviously go to the number. Um, okay. it, it, it's, not, it's not something like Ian Bell, is it? Okay, Ian Bell. Is it Alistair Cook? The answer is Chris Rogers. Wow. <laughs> 75. I reckon, that one needed, Sundays. I, reckon, <laughs> I reckon that one needed to be multiple choice. I'm just, no, we're just I'm not as wonderful what you're doing. <laughs> we're doing I hard just, hitting. We're doing hard hitting. You say uh, 75. Yeah. Boundaries um, in the series. Yep. Good effort, book. Yep. All, off the, all of them off the hip. All of them off the hip. Only one of them, only one of them was a six. Um, in really? twenty in twenty thirteen series, one <laughs> bowler averaged under twenty. Who was it? Graham Swan. Graham Swan. Yeah. He was just over twenty. Ryan oh. Harris. Oh, oh, oh. No, yeah. 19.5. No, I, I genuinely think multiple choice. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I thought these guys were really good. <laughs> yeah, they were no, really good yeah, yeah. Normally we do higher or lower yeah, to make course. it easier. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just first one. Um, but it's a, it's a good note. 2009, final one. Uh, Ashes series. Australia scored the sixth highest total ever. What was it? Closest wins. 2009 Ashes. 631. I was going to say 629. <laughs> 631 is closer. So we got a tiebreaker. It was 674 Whoa. in Cardiff. For Another six. tie. The week of ties. Oh. Another tie. So the last. Yeah, that, that, game, that game in Cardiff was a tie. It was. Yeah. The, yeah. Draw in the end. Yeah. Right. So the further win in 2005, I knew we'd come to this series, the, the classic. Yeah. England had four of the top five run scorers, but who was the top Australian? And if you say the same name, we need the number. Ricky Ponting. Michael Clark. Okay, both wrong. So what's the number <laughs> for the win? <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Who was it? I mean, uh, Hayden. No, still wrong. <laughs> <What's the laughs> Give me the number of the top runs for the Australian. This is great. Uh, uh, he's bad, bad 300. Yeah, 300 from you, Thorny. <laughs> Two, 284. The answer is Justin Langer, 394. Great. Correct. Yeah. Uh, Gilly, was that the win? <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Congratulations, <laughs> Gilly. You limped across the line. What a what a wonderful uh, victory. Well, well done, Crew Australia yeah. Travel, for coming yeah. on board for such a well-oiled <laughs> machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, oh, the thing to do, if you've just tuned in for the quiz, I know a lot of people do come on only for the quiz. What have they got to do to support the travel office, get their quickening yep. travel needs exactly. satisfied? Ooh. All packages, flights, hotels, everything, um, then head to their website. And luckily, their main segment is story time, not the quiz. I'm just trying mm. to get creative. Cricket.com.au yeah, slash travel for that. That's very, it. very good. Thank you, Ollie. Ollie can, you, quick... can you just speak to the boss of Kedah just to ask, can I have 20,000 tickets for next year's Ashes? <laughs> that should be fine. That should be fine. Yeah. yeah. Just for friends and family. <laughs> Vaughn, is it? They want to they come and see the victory. So. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh -huh. Are they? You got a lot of Aussie mates. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, that was Club Prairie Fire. You can find us at Club Prairie Fire everywhere. That is YouTube, 
TikTok and Instagram and X. Yeah. And X, get on, follow us, tell your friends, tell your family. All that's left to do is the man of many tequilas will give us a toast. Yeah. Uh, Adam Gilchrist, over to you. Oh, geez, to Queen Australia Travel Office. Yeah, good Thank shout, Gil. Absolutely. Pleasure to be on board with you. Mm. Long may, uh, long may the, the ticket purchases mm. be high for you. Cheers. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Well, first of all, thanks for watching. But if you liked it, uh, give us a like or hit the button below to subscribe. That'd be great.